Welcome to Lithuania. I'm in Kaunas. I'm here kind of by accident. I'm on my way to see Kim in Bergen. You know Kim. Uh, you've seen him around on the channel a little bit. Uh, he wants me to go and see Norway's National Day. But on the way I'm stopping off in Kaunas, Lithuania for a few hours because it was cheaper to fly that way. Last time I was in Lithuania, it was a bit of an adventure back in 2016. Some nice girl who I used to work with invited me here. We didn't actually end up meeting up. I think she was uh, catfishing me or something like that. Anyway, I'm about to take the bus into town. It's a bit unnecessarily complicated. I'm going on the 29G bus. Really impressed in Lithuania, they got 29G. Let's go have a look, see what Kaunas has to offer. Good old Lithuania. Nice to be back. Five and a half years later. About these beautiful balconies. Look, there's a bathtub on that one. Now uh, think about it, having a bath. We're in a lovely view over the city of Kaunas. Wow. Who knew Lithuania had such beautiful churches? Look at this one. It's called the Soboras in the local language. Church of St. Michael the Archangel. Catholic Church. We're right next to it, a little kids playground. <laughs> what a nice uh, idea of shared space. Cool city, look, lots of space. Doesn't look very busy for a Saturday afternoon though, does it? Fortunately though, you can see it needs a little bit of TLC on these pillars. It was built in the late 1800s and it's actually a military church. And obviously, of course, the Soviet Union was secular. So it wasn't used for religion back in uh, the days when Lithuania was part of the Soviet Union. It was actually an art gallery. Right, according to my Lithuanian friend, this is the street to walk down, to go from the Soboras, go for a nice walk down to Kaunas Castle. It should take us about half an hour, so come and join me. It's very modern, isn't it? Look. Just what I need, some caffeine. Temporarily, they don't accept bank cards and I've got no cash, so uh, we'll have to go somewhere else. So no coffee, but I've ended up with an old Valentino Rossi Monster Energy drink in honor of my old mate Panos. Hi Panos, if you're watching. There's that nice church we saw earlier, that kind of a brutalist Soviet looking one. How cool. And when I was in the supermarket, uh, I noticed this sign and it said uh, that in Lithuania, apparently, you can only buy alcohol. I presume this is in the supermarkets. Uh, between 10 in the morning and 8 at night, Monday to Saturday, and then on Sunday only until 3 p.m. So if you want to get drunk uh, for cheap in Lithuania, make sure you get the beers in uh, before the sun goes down. Baltic Clipper, wow, quite an elaborate hairdresser's over there. There's a rock concert going on in the central square, but there's nobody attending it, look. Why is there no one at the concert? There's just one bald guy. The band look very popular or something, I don't know. Yeah, it looks very impressive. And there's some parade over there. Wow, it's like there's lots of different things going on at the same time, but nobody's coordinating them. Oh look, we've got some concert goers here. Look, they've been shopping. Now they're out watching their concert in Kaunas. All right, so apparently this is the central post office, uh, considered one of the key representative buildings of the interwar period in Kaunas, a vivid statement of national modernism. This building reflects one of the paths in the search of a Lithuanian style. I think they did a grand job, look at that. All right, I'm just getting some cash out here and they give you a nice option. It says 50 euro in small notes so you're not lumbered with a 50 and then trying to break it when you're paying, you know, like I do one euro for things here and there. Look at that, it comes out, you get a 20 and three tens. That is nice and efficient Lithuania, very good. Top marks from me. So this that I've just walked down, it was called the Lysvis Aleja, Lysvis Avenue. Kaunas's most famous street, apparently. Now, apparently here, to get down to the castle, we're going to turn left. All right, this street looks a bit more like Chalawa. <laughs> you know, my favorite city back in Belgium, uh, with, you know, like the little uh, mound of um, <laughs> stones and rubble and stuff. But yeah, maybe we're coming to the more rustic part of town now. Let's have a look. <laughs> Careful you don't trip up on these, especially at night. Ah, and Hesburger, one of my favourite places to go when visiting Central Europe.
Oh wow, look at this uh, little cutlery set. Kinds of souvenirs you can buy in Kaunas. All right, hopefully this little walkway is gonna take us further along our way to the castle. Oh look, how charming a florist. Hello. Charming little underground forest, a bit nicer than when I was in Moldova. I guess you compare this to my recent video in Moldova. You can see how uh, different former Soviet countries come through different stages of development. Lithuania has since joined the European Union and although not perfect, it's benefited a lot from uh, these uh, European Regional Development Funds. And even though this street isn't perfect, I'm sure it's on its way to being. We saw the nice modern city centre back there. And then if you look back at my Moldova video, you'll see what I mean. Wow, looks at this building, 1885. Pretty old city. Look down there. It's a nice kind of bohemian part of town, this. You feel like it would be a bit more lively if uh, it was taken a bit more care of. You can get businesses like this back up and running, look. Maybe victims of the pandemic, I guess, as well. You never know. After everything that's been going on the last couple of years. You've even got a lovely Indian restaurant. Look at this. The locals seem uh, quite serious. Oh, cool. Look at this big uh, red brick church. It's like being in Liverpool. Outside, we've got here Jonas Machulis, Lithuanian Roman Catholic priest and greatest and most known Lithuanian poet, especially during the period of the Lithuanian press ban. So, I guess... Uh, Another comparison with Moldova, like uh, we found the Pushkin house, we found Jonas Machulius Myronis resting place. Maybe not a father, but a uh, great proponent of uh, Lithuanian poetry and literature. Wow, it's busy. Always a church or a cathedral to see in Europe, isn't there? And then just over the road, you've got this charming square. Look at that! Oh, look at that lovely little tower. Two more towers. Lots of churches. It's a bloody wet part of the world as well. Look at this. The rain's just started coming down. I was just uh, <laughs> looking at the river down here, the Neman, which flows from central Belarus out into Lithuania. And here in Kaunas, uh, it's the confluence with the Neris River where they combine and uh, they become the great river flowing out uh, eventually into the Baltic Sea. Well, I hope this rain stops. Ruin my little layover trip. Let's go see if we can find that castle, shall we? We won't let rain spoil play. I've got my waterproof boots on, like Kim told me. Look, usually they're for winter, but it's May and uh, I'm heading north. So uh, good idea to bring your waterproofs. So you remember I went in the church earlier. <laughs> Apparently I was gate crashing a wedding. But not everybody dresses up fancy apparently in Lithuania. Quite a, quite a low-key affair, look. Look at me, uh, <laughs> random afternoon trip to Kaunas and I'm gate crashing a wedding. <laughs> there you go, beautiful bride and groom. Here we go, Kaunas Castle. It reminds me of an oast house back in Kent. Oh, this is nice. All right, I guess we go over the little bridge here. So look, once you're out of the city centre, you've got these big open spaces, look. You've got some kind of art here. Very Soviet, actually. Reminds me of some of the stuff I saw in Transnistria. And then, hashtag Kaunas2022. All right, so it's uh, to do with open air theatre, apparently. So I guess there's some seats around there behind the, the castle. And they're putting on some plays and stuff. Very cultural, so if you want to Come and see some outdoor theatre this year in Lithuania. Get your backside down to Kaunas Castle. It's an unusual castle, isn't it? Look at that. Lots and lots of battlements. Very well defended. And of course, like I said, there's a confluence of the rivers here. So here's the other river I was talking about earlier, which flows into the Neyman on our left. So a very strategic location. Very unconventional. Look at the shape here. Okay, so one of the oldest Lithuanian stone castles was first mentioned in written sources in 1361 as a castle to repel attacks by the Teutonic Order. The castle, built in the middle of the 14th century, became a strategically important component of their Neumannus Jura river defensive system, which protected the core of the Lithuanian state. 
Eventually, the castle lost its strategic importance. It was very important throughout the Middle Ages and then it declined in importance because, well, look at it. Not quite as mighty as it once would have been, I guess. It's basically a, an overgrown turret. I like it. And who's this uh, fella on horseback over here? Let's go have a look. Well, there's no plaque or anything, so all I can assume is that it's a knight representing everybody who has defended Lithuania over the years. Long live Lithuanian independence. Here's a bit of a clue. This is the flag of the city of Kaunas. So I guess it's the knight from the flag of the city of Kaunas. Made into a real life statue just for you and I to look at on YouTube. Oh wow, apparently the, the beast of Kaunas lives here. <laughs> Behind uh, this uh, little stone wall. Oh yeah, can you hear it snoring? Wow, I was quite scared looking into that. Obviously it's a, <laughs> I don't know, probably, probably, I want to say a big speaker playing into there, but it was a bit realistic. I'm not sure about that. So is that over there yet another Lithuanian wedding? It seems like they all like getting married in Lithuania. Look, they even decked the kiddies' play area out in Lithuanian colours to try and get a bit of national spirit going. I always thought the Lithuanian flag looked like it belonged in Africa, but... Yeah, it's a nice one, look. Beautiful red, yellow and green. Very vibrant, just like the people. Alright guys, I hope you can hear me. It's really windy here, but I wanted to show you the reason why Kaunas is located where it is and it's this very spot here where this guy is having a photo because to the left of him you've got the Neman River and to the right of him you've got the Neris River. The Neris River rises in northern Belarus, flows through Lithuania's capital Vilnius and uh, meets here with the great Neman River and flows through to the Baltic Sea. Cool, huh? Here I am, stuck between two rivers. Right, I think I've earned a beer, what do you reckon? Do you want to come and join me? Let's do it. Okay, something a bit weird. This little kind of boggy peat thing down here um, is shaped like a map of Lithuania. How cool is that? You see where these girls are jumping around here? I thought that was a cricket square as well. I was going to say, oh look, they play cricket in, <laughs> in Lithuania, but definitely not. Just a protected running track, I think. Do you reckon you could lift that one ton kettlebell? And if you come into Kaunas and you want to come to this particular park, it's called the San Takas Park. Oh look, this Lithuanian wedding, it's got the little reception tent next door. Lovely. And here's the outdoor amphitheatre place I was telling you about earlier where you can go and see hashtag Kaunas2022. The thing I will say about Lithuania is that you barely ever see any Russian written anywhere. Obviously it was part of the former Soviet Union, but they very much made Lithuanian the language, which I guess it always has been in this area. Goes to Moldova, for example, where the main language is Moldovan or Romanian, whatever you want to call it, but you see Russian spoken everywhere as well there. All right, let's see if uh, we can get a beer here, the Hop Dock. Got a Baltic porter for me to try, look. From the Jenny's Brewing Company. Oh, lovely. Nice and bitter, just right. Not too thick. It's got those lovely coffee notes. That's the name of the brewery. Jenny's or Jenny's. And look, I also spotted this on my way in. A breathalyzer. So I told you earlier about this uh, alcohol uh, thing, not uh, being able to sell it in the supermarkets past 10 o'clock at night. And they've got this as well, your breathalyzer. Actually it was eight o'clock, wasn't it? Eight o'clock, that does seem early. Very alcohol conscious here in Lithuania. I guess they've seen what uh, happened over the border in Russia. Right, so I'm just gonna check in for my uh, Wizz Air flight onto Bergen uh, this evening now. Apparently it's delayed, but... Uh, I should still get there. Kim will probably be celebrating Liverpool winning the FA Cup. Top tip from me, check in for your Wizz Air or your Ryanair flight one hour before the check-in closes because you're more likely to get one of those nice big legroom seats. Let's see if I get one. 
And look at that, 2B, right at the front of the aircraft, so I'll be able to get off it quickly and go find Kim down the pub and have a few drinks with him tonight. So look what I've got here to try, tempura fried pickles, wow. I love pickles, oh, they're a bit too hot. Highly recommended. Apparently they do them here. Not really a Lithuanian speciality, just something uh, particular to this hop dock place. Ooh. Highly recommended, very nice. Lovely combination, the sourness of the pickles, the cheese sauce and the batter. So I've decided to try one more beer before I head off to the airport to head off to Norway. Um, it's called the Californication beer, so I might be wearing my Nirvana t-shirt today, but I still remember Red Hot Chili Peppers as one of my favourite bands of all time, so uh, it's a local one as well. American style session IPA, ah, very nice, yep. That is my cup of tea and I thought I'd come outside just to enjoy the last of the Lithuanian sunshine for the day, look at this. Beautiful weather we're having here in Old Kaunas. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick uh, walk up and down the main street of Kaunas uh, while I'm on a layover between uh, flights. Yeah, I hope I showed you that if you've got a long layover, so mine was, oh, I think my flight this afternoon arrived about two o'clock and my one this evening is at nine o'clock. So if you've got, oh, let's say seven hours between flights, that is enough time to come into the city, go have a quick look round, try a bit of local food as well, a couple of beers, have a look round, just get a feeling for the city and see if you'd like to come back. And Although on my uh, little Google travel map, I didn't have any places marked in particular for Kaunas. I do for Vilnius, uh, but not for Kaunas. So I'm sure I'll be back in Lithuania in the future to have a look around Vilnius and uh, maybe come back to Kaunas as well. So yeah, take care guys. Um, and I think the next time I see you will be in Norway with Kim, where I'm off to you now. Take care. Look, a quick one before I go, look, the Church of St. George. Patron center of, of course, my country, England, and uh, Georgia as well. From this angle, it looks abandoned, but uh, maybe it's just being renovated, look. Kaunastastic. Kaunastic? I've had too much to drink today already. There we go, that was a bit complicated. Back on the old 29G to the old airport. Bizarre situation here at Kaunas Airport. They won't let the people go through to security for some reason. So everybody's standing around here waiting for their flights to Bergen and Bristol and Edinburgh tonight, but uh, <laughs> they won't let us through. How strange. I tried to go through and they told me to go back. So what else does a man do? He goes and gets a beer. Unfortunately, a Heineken, it's all they have.